Mulder. Scully, Skinner, Spender, Kirch, Doggett, and of course, the cigarette smoking man. If you know anything about science fiction, you will no doubt recognize these characters from the hit television show, The X-Files, one of the longest running science fiction series ever on television. And tonight we have all the goods and maybe a few bads on that show. Welcome to Creature Features. This is my refined butler, Livingston. This would be my unrefined housemate, Tangela. And the mess at the center of your screen would be yours truly, Vincent Van Gogh. The reason for my broaching the topic of the X-Files is because tonight we shall be joined by Matt Allaire, founder of the X-Files Lexicon, a massive website containing anything one could ever want to know about Matt's favorite show. He'll be telling us a multitude of dark secrets concerning Mulder and Scully, and I imagine a good deal more. You enjoy that show, don't you, Livingston? No, I found it confusing and rather disturbing. Well, I'm sure it wasn't as confusing nor as disturbing as tonight's feature, 1964's The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price and a rather pleasing array of Italian actors. Our guest Matt is also an expert on this particular film and will share golden nuggets of knowledge about its creation. So join us for another astonishing episode of Creature Features. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime at www.scarystorytime.com. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair, and if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television, coming up. Welcome back to the show. We are joined by Mr. Matt Allaire. Matt, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for coming all the way up. Thank you. Through all this smokiness. So you are an expert on the X-Files. Indeed. Now, I think you're something above an expert because an X-File is like you're a double expert. A uh, super fan is the way they, what they call fan. it. super fan? That sounds less than expert. Well... I've been dubbed as a super fan. I, I suppose I'm a bit more than that. I think you are. I, I think I'm going to call you Matt Allaire, PhD in the X-Files. Okay. Right? Thank you. Right. So he knows everything about the X-Files. We're going to talk about the X-Files, but we're going to watch a movie too, which is The Last Man on Earth. And you know everything about this film as well. Indeed. And then some. And then maybe there's a tie-in between the two, right? X-Files and Last Man on Earth now? Well, know. I mean... Uh, Richard Matheson worked on uh, The Twilight Zone, and The X-Files was influenced by The Twilight Zone. Oh, so it's like six degrees of separation, I think. Sort of, Maybe. yeah. Maybe. All right. Was Vincent Price ever on The X-Files? Or was nope. he dead? He was dead. Yeah. That's sad. 
but he lives on in this he film. He lives on with all, all of his great films. Right. Well, let's start this film. And then uh, when we come back, we're going to talk with Matt about the X-Files and this film and other things. So you stay with us. You stay with us. And we shall return after the break. Another day to live through. Better get started. been since I inherited the world only three years it seems like a hundred million day there are more of them. They live off the weak ones and leave them for the pit. KW calling. Come in.
KOKW calling. I'm on international frequency. Come in. Pleasurable. Now it bores me. Just fuel for survival. I'll settle for coffee and orange juice this morning. But first, there's my life transitor. I'd better replace that garlic. I'll need more, lots more. Better stop off and get them. I can't afford the luxury of anger. Anger can make me vulnerable. It can destroy my reason, and reason's the only advantage I have over them. I've got to find where they hide during the day. Uncover every one of them. Now, where did I finish off yesterday? Madison Street to 31st Avenue. Eleven kills. Over three years. And there's more than half the city I haven't searched. flesh apart so their body seal can't function. And how many more of these will I have to make before they're all destroyed? They want my blood, if their lives are mine. And I still get squeamish. Wait, that garlic. I'd better put it back where it belongs. I can't live a heartbeat away from hell and forget it. I can get rid of them later. Right now, I'm out of gas.
Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Boswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? So, you know, I'm not entirely sure these are not zombies or vampires. What, what are they? Well, they're vampires, but they don't really, they, they're, they're not typical of like, uh, they don't sleep in coffins and they don't bury themselves in the earth. Um, they just hide in the indoors during the daytime. Hmm. Now, these films, they're all based on that book, I Am Legend. Yes, Richard yes. Matheson's book. Richard Matheson. So in that book, did you ever read it? Oh yes, I, I read it several times. I mean, Does he identify them as vampires? Or? Uh, they're considered vampires in the book. All right. Well, that makes sense. I mean, they stay in at night, or no, in the day. They they stay in during the day. Well, you know, I like this film. It's a very I mean, good film. I like film. Vincent Price, but I like this film. It's yeah. just so well done. And the it's, it's nicely is, done, and it's yeah. it's a little slow paced, and I don't know. It may try the patience of the the M the MTV generation as far as are the pace that people see nowadays, but it's Well, you know, we done. chop it up. We take out all the boring parts and put you where those boring parts used to be, so. Indeed, okay. It's not the full movie, sorry. It's the way television works. If we had like a two and a half hour show, we could do it. Right. All right, well, let's talk about X-Files. How did you get into such a thing? Uh, I started watching the show back in 94. I was like one of the first, was part of the first generation of fans that right. got into the show and just faithfully followed it up until it ended in 2002. Um, went and did other things. In 2005, I created the X-Files lexicon. I'd been writing for the Harry Potter lexicon and that experience started to make me think that, well, you know, maybe I could do this with the X-Files and there was nothing else out there that was like the kind of website that I set up, so. But what attracted you to the X-Files? What was it about the show that uh, made it? The writing, the fact that it was very creepy um, right. It was also very eclectic. It wasn't just a horror show or a sci-fi show. It was a little bit of everything. 
And I thought that was, I mean, you would have a monster of the week and then you'd have a mythology episode or you would have um, like a lighter comedic type episode. And there was always an overarching storyline as well. Yeah, there, there was always a, like an arch, overarching storyline, um, but it wasn't serialized in the way that other TV shows usually are serialized. It, it was like there would be connections, but there would be all these standalone episodes where you could just enjoy that episode right. and you wouldn't have to be thinking about, well, what's the, the main So plot. it's not like a soap opera. Not really. Right, right. All right, well, let's get back to this film. I want to talk some more about The X-Files when we come back, but we've got to get back to this film because it's, it's time. And it's a good film. Very right? good. It gets better, right? Yes. I know. I've seen this one before. You know, most of the time I haven't seen these films. This one I've seen twice. So, all right. Well, you stay with us because this is going to get better. See you soon. How long will I have to keep up this search? time left. It'll be dark in an hour. before the sun will rise and drive them back to darkness.
another day. Another day to start all over again. The sun's already set. They'll be everywhere. Thank you. 
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for calling on hold hosting. How can I sort of help you? I hate you. I hate you so much. Oh, you got problems with your website? I got problems. You want to hear about my problems? Welcome to HostGator, what can I help you with? Is that better? Awesome. Thank you for calling HostGator. Kick your website up a notch with the world's greatest site kick support. Sign up today at HostGator.com. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Lair went out to, into the parking lot to meet with a shadowy figure for some conspiratorial reason, I imagine. The smoking man. Oh, well, smoking's not good. In any case, let's do letters. What do we got? Tinchella, I, I thought you threw that away. She's not going to get rid of that thing, is she? Unfortunately. It's disgusting. All right. How, how are you, by the way? You all right? You stand, besides this, have you been staying out of trouble? Mm. We never know. All right. Our first letter is from Leaf. What is this like from a tree? Scandinavian. Uh, this is a real name, Leaf. He didn't put a last name. He's from San Francisco, California. Leaf. Really? I didn't know that. All right. He says, Dear Creature Dudes. Does that mean she's not included in this? I believe she's included in that, sir. No, it's like the California. Everyone's a dude. Indeed. It took me forever to get used to this. All right. He goes, I get like totally excited to see you dudes every Saturday night. He said it again. There's something totally retro radical about your show and i think that's super shway what does shway mean cool cool all right well thank you I, what, what in god's name is this word namaste what does that mean it is a greeting from people who are very into meditation and yoga it, is this like chinese Indian. No. Hindu. All right. He says, Namaste and keep up the good work, Leaf. Well, thank you, Leaf. Dude, we will. We'll try, but thank you for the note. All right, what do we got next? You know, at least you could brush the teeth on that thing. I, I take it to the dentist. I, I'm trying. Oh, this is a long one. Uh, this is uh, from Kurt. He doesn't say where. We've got an email address, but it doesn't tell us where that means. He goes, uh, hello, everyone. 
So that's all of us and all of you, I imagine. He says, just want to say that I loved to watch the old creature features with Bob Wilkins. Do you suppose he actually watched it with Bob Wilkins? I think he watched it with Bob Wilkins on it. Oh, all right. But I must say that I think you guys have kicked it up a few notches. I look forward to Saturday night's great show. All three of you are awesome. Really enjoy everything about the show. Keep up the great job. Question for Vincent. See? What rock and roll band were you in? This is, they're always asking this. I'm not in a rock and roll band now, obviously, but it was, it was called Prince of Darkness, and it was awful. Don't even look it up because it was dreadful. Well, you like two of the songs. No. Nah. See? It's dreadful. Thank you, Kurt. We'll talk to you soon. And the last letter is from... Oh, my God. I can't pronounce this. I'll try. E -d I can't do it. Y-D-A-L-B-E-R-T-O. Y de Belto, right? Why? Oh, help me. Yel del Belto. All right. What well, he said, and he's uh, from Brentwood. You know, I used to live in Brentwood, but this is a different Brentwood, right? Yes. Brentwood, California is like, it's got its own zip code. And I was from Brentwood in Los Angeles, and it was just like a neighborhood, right? Indeed. And it's where OJ did that. There. What a dreadful time. You remember that? I was. I tried not to. I mean, it wasn't. You know, I don't want to pass judgment, but it, there was so much chaos in the neighborhood when that happened, and it used to be such a quiet place. All right, he says, "Greetings, Vince. I really enjoy your show. Great film selections. That's mostly him, you know. Sometimes our guests get to choose, but he he usually chooses it. Keep your program running. Great horror films every week. Well, that's that's our prime directive, right?" run great horror films every week but we do show sci-fi sometimes right now and then we need to show more sci-fi i think wilkins showed much more sci-fi than we do maybe some somebody out there misses it but i, d I don't think yadabelto sophia will miss it so thank you for the note that's it for letters if you'd like to send us a letter the place to send it is appearing underneath my shoe and if you send us a letter do please, please plead with Tangella to toss this thing in the trash or bury it or burn it, right? No? We've got to keep working on this. All right, stay with us, some more of the movie, and then we'll be back. It's highly theoretical, Ben. Theoretical? Do I have to remind you that theory is a beginning of solution? Is Europe's disease carried on the wind? Is it, Ben? Could be. And if it is? It isn't, Verge. 
Is that what you really think, or just what you'd like to think? I, I cannot accept half-baked theories that sell newspapers. I'm, I'm a scientist, not an alarmist. You're whistling past the graveyard. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Uncle Ben, you promised your cartridge. All right, Kathy. Who can resist that face? <laughs> All right. Card tricks. Card tricks. Robert, is it possible this germ or virus could be airborne? Anything is possible, Verge. The best brains in the world have been running through this thing with a fine tooth comb. The germ is visible under a microscope, but it's not like any bacilli I ever known. In what way? It can't be destroyed by any process we've been able to uncover. But with the whole world trying, there must be a hey, solution. Mommy. Hey, Mommy! When are you gonna cut the cake? <laughs> right now, our problem is to cut that cake. <laughs> hey, Mommy! Hey, Mommy! Coming! Coming! wind wake you up? It always does. How do you feel? I'm all right. Oh, don't get up, honey. I'm not sick, Bob. I'll make you You don't have to. I'll be all right. Go on and read your paper. All right. Oh, sweetheart, look, if you don't feel well, please go back to bed. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I wish somebody would find a vaccine. It's all we're working on at the lab, Verge. Maybe you better not send her to school today. All right. You... You think you should go to work? I have to. Oh, Bob. Bob. I'm so... Frightened. Everything's going to be all right, sweetheart. Well, the bacilli are multiplying. 
That kicks the bone marrow theory in the head. This specimen shows a higher white count than when I put it on the slide. Those cells are still living, Dr. Mercer, off one another. There has to be an answer. You heard that all communications are ended outside the continental limits? Yes, I heard. That leaves it in our laps. So we keep trying. Where's Cortman? Well, he should be here by now. You two stay on this virus theory until I decide it's exhausted. Right. Yes, sir? Morgan will fill you in. All right, sir. And what did the great man of science have to say today? More of the usual? Oh, he's trying, Ben, just like the rest of us. And nothing works. The streets are swarming with truckloads of bodies that they're throwing into that god-awful pit. And the dedicated Dr. Mercer goes on with his plodding, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportions. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Now let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You'd prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and, and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know his milk. Now, is this bacilli or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. The point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. So, Matt, it's obvious that these are vampires because I forgot about the whole thing with the stakes. I mean, if they were zombies, it would be like a stake in the brain, right? Indeed, yes. That makes sense to me, I think. I don't know. Anyways, you were telling me about George Romero. Well, yes. Um, this film 
actually inspired George Romero when he was making Night of the Living Dead. Um, so the, the audience sees the, the shots of the vampires lumbering towards um, Morgan's house. Um, it, they'll probably will remind them of the scenes in the 68 um, Line of the Living Dead of the zombies attacking that the house. Coming through the door. And actually, years later, Richard Matheson and George Romero met, and, um, and George Romero jokingly put up his arms in defense and said, I never made any money off of the, the movie. That's hilarious. He didn't, sadly. Yeah. And it went into public domain, which is kind of nice because people like us can run it. So uh, back to your X-Files. You were telling me that you did the Blu-ray, some work on the Blu-ray version. For the second X-Files movie, uh, I want to believe I did the, uh, some of the extras on the Blu-ray, the, the interactive timeline. Right. So I, I wrote um, some of the content. I had two other people from my website that were helping me at the time right. with it. So we did a lot of the research and made sure that all the dates and all the information that's in that timeline was, was correct. Can we see this on the website? Yes, it's, uh, if you get the Blu-ray for the second film, um, it's on the extras. It says interactive timeline. Right, but if they go to the, your website, can they see some of this information? Oh, uh, of course, yes. Well, maybe we should mention the website now. So if somebody wants to look while they're watching the movie, they can look it up. www.x-fileslexicon.com x-fileslexicon.com Yeah, which is all one word. Easy. No space. <laughs> All right, well, uh, and so you worked on this, and they must have paid you like a million dollars to do this. Not really. I just got, we got a bunch of uh, free DVDs and CDs from Fox. Well, that could be almost worth a million dollars, right? Close. Close. It was a lot. A million pounds. I don't know. Well, you got to work on your favorite show, right? It is your favorite Indeed. show. Right? Of course, yes. I would hope. I mean, you're an expert. I mean, it's not like you, you're an expert on X-Files and you watch My Little Pony. Yeah, right. I, I wouldn't want to write about My Little, little Pony. It'd so. be, it wouldn't be much to write about, would it wouldn't, there? You know, there wouldn't be much there. Yeah, and I don't think they'd have a DVD extra either. Yeah, probably not. Nor would you have friends on the website that would probably help. It'd be like you and like somebody who just reads it. Right. I don't know. I'm rambling. All right, what do you say? We get back to this film, and okay. then uh, we'll see what happens here, and then we're going to talk some more about the X-Files things and your other projects, and uh, maybe we'll talk about My Little Pony too. I don't know. Or Maybe. Not. It's Saturday. Let's have fun. Stay with us. And until further notice, this station will continue its around the clock coverage of this national disaster. And now, we switch you to the state capitol, where His Excellency, the Governor, is speaking from the Executive Mansion. Further, I have, in conjunction with the federal government, declared this state to be a disaster area. The public health is dependent on bodies of the deceased being burned. You must notify the health department immediately. If you have a plague victim in your home, under no circumstances should you gather public. In view of the dire emergency that exists, I intend to... Anything new? Huh? No, nothing new. to call the doctor. I said no. Verge, there's nothing they can do. Oh, we can't just let her lie there. Well, this way she has a chance. If you call a doctor, he'll report it. Do you want that? Mommy, help me. Mommy. Mommy, please help me. Mommy, help me. How can you be so sure she... Blindness is one of the symptoms. You're not to call a doctor under any circumstances. No one is to come into this house. Now remember that. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy, where are you? I've got to pick Ben Cortman up on the way to the... the lab. 
no one is to come into this house. <laughs> now remember that. Who's there? It's me, Ben. We're late. Ben, what's the matter with you? Nothing, and I'm going to keep it that way. Ben, look, let's talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You think I'm out of my mind. You laughed at me in my theory. You might be one of them. Ben, look, you're ill. You ought to see a doctor. No, doctors. You take care of your life, I'll take care of mine. Now get away from here. You understand? Get away from here! If you're looking for anybody but me, forget it. Are they all gone? That's right. Is there any hope from the latest reports? No, not yet. But believe me, Morgan, we'll find an answer. When, Doctor? We need it right now. I need it. You're the only one who wasn't afraid to come here today. What's going to happen, Dr. Mercer? Is everybody in the world going to die before someone finds the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that.
Quinn. Quinn. I called the doctor. I had to. I told you not to call anyone. Mom, she was blind. She couldn't see. She kept reaching out her hands, groping for me. And then, all of a sudden, she was gone. And they came in. I tried to stop them. They took her. I saw a truck out there. Was that it? Was it? I'm sorry, lady. There's nothing I can do. Let that truck through. Get out of the way. Get back, folks. Nobody's allowed out there. Please, all of you, get behind those lines. Look sharp there. Move. Move along. Make way for that truck. Make way. Hey, you, mister, come back. Come back. Did this truck just come in from Market Street? I said, did this truck just come in from Market Street? Mister, I don't know. Hey, you don't belong in here. Get out. I said, get out. I want my daughter. Mister, a lot of daughters are in there, including my own. I won't let them put you there, Verge. I promise. I won't let them put you there. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime 
at www.scarystorytime.com. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. You know, I absolutely adore the scenery in this film. Matt, you were telling me they filmed this in Rome. Yes, from Italy. Rome. Why? That was, that was very common. It Italian directors would hire American or British actors to appear in their films, and a a a AIP would be release the film so here. So this is like a spaghetti horror film. Sort of. I love it. It could be a Western as well, but no, it's a horror film, so... Is it technically horror? Technically, I'd say so. It is. You got dead bodies and... I suppose any time there's a dead body. Unless it's a, like, mystery. A dead, dead body that comes back to life is, oh, you know, right. a horror It's not film. a mystery. We know what happened there. Yeah. All right, so tell me more. You're telling me there's some unusual history with this film. Well, prior to the film being made, um, Hammer Studios approached um, Richard Matheson to do a movie version of I Am Legend. And he's the author. Of the he was the author. Right. Uh, and that was going to be directed by Anthony Hins. And then um, Matheson wrote a script, and then the British uh, censors thought the script was too horrifying and they wouldn't pass it. You know, these British censors, usually they're fine. You can have, like, on television, and something like this, as lame, tame as this film is, they would not allow. No. So that's why it ended up going to this other studio, I assume. Probably. And they filmed it in Rome and made it a spaghetti horror film. You know, sort well, of. I, th I think it adds a nice touch. So would they have filmed it in the UK? Had they? I, my guess is, yeah, probably in right. the, the classic uh, studios that they use for a lot of the Hammer films. So instead of sun, we would have had fog and rain. Probably. I think history did us right. So uh, on this X-Files thing, you know, we had Veronica Cartwright on the show several weeks or months, what was it? Weeks, months? Right. It was months, right. And uh, she was so excited to be working on the new X-Files. Indeed. So uh, I've never seen the episodes that she was in. I've seen quite a few episodes, but not the ones she was in. She played whom? Cassandra Spender. Oh, it's quite a name. And her, she was, had, the, had a relationship with Cigarette Smoking Man at one point, and they had a son um, who ended up causing a lot of problems for Mulder throughout seasons five, six, and seven. She, she was, Cassandra Spender was supposedly abducted by aliens, and so that's the reason why the Mulder character uh, got involved. So with the Cassandra Spender coming back, what do you think they're trying to do with that in the story? Well, they're, they're trying to wrap up the, uh, the, the primary mythology and the impending plague that has been kind of an overarching idea in the mm -hmm. series for a long time. I don't really know what, what Cassandra's role is going to be because she may be still dead. It could be her, it could be somebody else. There are alien bounty hunters and there are shapeshifters and all this involved in the show. So whenever somebody reappears, you never know. If it's them. If it's them. It could be a surprise. Indeed. We'll never know. Anyway, so I'm getting the signal we got to get back to the film. We're going to talk some more about X-Files when we come back. We're going to talk some more about this film. And uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to talk about my shoes as well. Who knows? All Stay right. with us.
it's a lie. Wait! Don't run away! Come back here! Don't run away! Come back! Come back here! Wherever he is, I've got to find him. If I have to search every street, every house, every alley, every inch of this town, I've got to find him. Someone else is alive in this world. But where are they? Where are they hiding? How many are there? Where did they come from? Why haven't I seen them? This is Robert Morgan. If somebody can hear me, answer me. For God's sake, answer me. This is KOKW calling. KOKW calling. Answer me. Finally decided to come back. It's all right, boy. Good boy. Oh, no. Don't worry, boy. You're going to be all right. Yes, you are. they're out there, don't you? You poor, driven thing. Everything's going to be all right. Nobody's going to hurt you. Everything's going to be all right. All right. You're going to get better. We're going to have lots of happy times together. You'll see, everything's going to be fine.
Wait, I'm not gonna hurt you, can't you understand? Wait! If I was one of them, you know that they can't come out until sundown. Do you want to come with me or do you want to face them? Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for calling On Hold Hosting. How can I sort of help you? I hate you. I hate you so much. Oh, you got problems with your website? I got problems. You want to hear about my problems? Welcome to HostGator. What can I help you with? Is that better? Awesome. Thank you for calling HostGator. Kick your website up a notch with the world's greatest site kick support. Sign up today at HostGator.com. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Sutherland from Power Rangers and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! 
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Feeling better? Yes. Would you like a cup of coffee? Thank you. You seem very well organized here. Yeah. My name is Ruth Collins. I was married. I lost my husband. You are alone. You were married. Yes. Children. My daughter. What are you doing? Please stop, please. Stop it, please. You're making me sick. Why do you turn please. away? Please. Why do you turn away? <laughs> You think I'm one of them? You will be. You've made up your mind just because I... You can't change the facts by talking. Facts? What facts? That I got sick? I've had a sensitive stomach all my life. I saw my husband killed, torn to pieces right in front of our house. I've been wandering ever since, hiding at night, not eating more than scraps. Sick with mourning, sick with fear, unable to sleep. Then you shout at me. You chased me across a field, hit me, drag me to this house. And to top it all, when I get sick because you shove a piece of reeking garlic in my face, you tell me I'm infected. Where are Let you me going? Go. You can't go out there. It's almost sunset. Let me go, you can't I said. go out there. Now in a few I minutes, the care. streets will be full Let of. Me go. And please, I don't care. let me give you a blood test. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You must be hungry. I'll fix you some dinner. Should eat. I can't.
You seem used to them. Oh, as much as anybody could be. I'm not frightened of them anymore, if that's what you mean. Oh, I protect myself against them, but only because they're so many. Individually, they're weak, mentally incompetent, like animals after a long famine. If they weren't, they surely would have found a way of breaking in here a long time ago. Come out, Morgan! Hear that? That's Ben Cortman. He was my friend. Your friend? He was like a kid brother. If I could find him and destroy him... But you said he was your friend. When I find him, I'll drive a stake through him, just like all the others. But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hmm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago, when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. You don't think that I'm immune, do you? It's a simple matter to find out whether you are or not. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? You don't have to answer. I know as well as you do. It's incurable. There might be a way. If not of killing the germ, at least of containing it, keeping it from spreading. If I had the equipment, the time. But you don't. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Hearties, I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Welcome back to the show. So we are watching. What are we watching? watching the Last Man film? on Earth. The Last Man on Earth. I, I've been intrigued with this fetching young woman. That is Franca Batoya. She's Italian. Italian, yes. Yeah. Italian, you know, I'm part Italian, small part. And yeah, Italian women are so lovely. I don't know. It must be in the food or the water. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of Italian women are. Uh, Mario Bava was great at foot photographing. Mario uh, whom? Mario Bava. He's another genre director. Bava? Yeah, Bava. B A V A. Oh, what a wonderful name. And he filmed, photographed women. He made them look beautiful. It was wonderful to see. Well, I, I bet she looks good without the photographer as well. Anyways, Indeed. enough about that. Let's talk about the X Files. So, you know, you've probably seen every episode like 10,000 times, right? What's your favorite? Uh, I love everything that Darren Morgan wrote. He, um, he wrote the um, Jose Chung from Outer Space, which is one of my all-time favorites. The Jose what? Jose Chung from Outer Space. Jose Chung from Outer Space. I have no idea what that means. Okay, well, it's Jose Chung is a character who is like, um, he's an author who's kind of like, um, well, not quite Truman Capote, but he's somebody that's like really respected, and he writes a book about alien abduction. Right. And the episode is, is basically like a, a satire on the alien abduction phenomenon. Oh, and so it's almost comedic. Yes. Maybe, right? he, Darren Morgan wrote a lot of comedic episodes. Well, that doesn't seem like it'd be a good fit for X-Files, but it sounds like it was. It, it did work. Really? And that's what makes the show so great is it was so did eclectic. Did they have like slapstick between? Not quite like Lauren, or, Lauren Hardy type slapstick, but I mean... It was it was it was clever, funny. A nice departure from. It's actually a rather depressing show. It I can mean, be. It seldom ends well. Uh, most of the time, no. Sometimes, yes. Um, actually, the show Millennium that Chris Carter created actually is even a bleaker show. I would say. I saw that. That had uh, Lance Hendrickson. Yes. Right. That was right after. Shortly after he uh, he had the whole fame with Terminator. Indeed. Whatever happened? Is he still with us? He's still with us. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've got people that, that talk to him all the time. So he's out there plugging away. Well, we should have him on the show, maybe, one day. Hopefully. It'd be nice. We could ask him about Terminator and Millennium, right? Yes. Millennium. I like that show. They canceled it, right? Uh, it lasted three seasons. No. Yeah. Is that enough? I don't think so. Not we won't last three seasons, but for the show well, like that? Well, actually, with uh, Millennium, there's, there's been uh, letter-writing campaigns and petitions to try to get you know, another season or a movie or something else to happen with well, that. Well, I'll write a letter. They won't read it, but I'll write one. All right, well, let's get back to The Last Man on Earth with Mr. Vincent Price. And uh, I think we're going to be wrapping this up pretty quick, so let's see the rest of the film. You stay with us. You stay with us. And uh, watch some of the commercials. We got some good commercials sometimes, adverts, the good products, services. I don't know. I don't watch them. Stay tuned. Injection, I'll be one again. What do you mean? You found a solution? That's right. Exactly as you said it could be. I take that for it. What is it? Defibrinated blood plus vaccine. The blood feeds the germ. The vaccine keeps it isolated and prevents it from multiplying. We've had it for some time now. We? We? There are quite a number of us. And I thought you were alone. I was going to cure you. Does that amuse you? No. Now, I want the truth. I want all of it. Why are you here? 
to find out if you know any more than we do. You know far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. We're going to reorganize society. Do away with all those wretched creatures who are neither alive nor dead. Start everything all over again. And you want me to join? You can't join us. You're a monster to them. Why do you think I ran when I saw you? Even though I was assigned to spy on you, because I was so terrified of what I'd heard about you. You're a legend in the city, moving by day instead of night, leaving as evidence of your existence bloodless corpses. Many of the people you destroyed were still alive. Many of them were loved ones of the people in my group. I didn't know. Is there any way you can get out of here? What do you mean? They're coming after you tonight. That's why I was sent here. To prevent you from resisting them. I'm supposed to keep you here. Until they come. To kill me? Yes. Your new society sounds charming. The beginning of any society is never charming or gentle. And you pretended to be shocked at my violence. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you go on and use it? Get it over with. Use it. Get it over with. <laughs> now you know. What are you going to do? <laughs> you doing? It's already done. What? Look. Look. You see, it worked, Ruth. The antibodies in my blood worked. My blood has saved you, Ruth. Do you know what this means? You and I can save all the others. We won't be alone. We'll never be alone again. You are sure? Wait. Don't be afraid. Oh. 
Where are you going? I've got to get out of here. Tell them you're not a threat to us. You can't go out there. You, you wouldn't get it. ten feet. When they come here, there won't be time for questions and answers. They'll come to kill. For God's sake, Robert, let me go. Oh, Robert, please. Ruth, look, tomorrow. Please. Oh, Robert. Tomorrow, Ruth. Tomorrow will no. be all right. Robert, no. Yes, Ruth. But if this doesn't last... But it will. I've already checked it under the microscope. Wait, I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. I'll check it again. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime at www.scarystorytime.com. Do you need caffeine just to start your day? Are you dragging in the afternoons craving sweets? Ever feel like your stomach is the bottomless pit? You're not alone, and there's nothing wrong with you. You're just eating the wrong foods. If you seek radiant health, increased stamina or weight loss, you need to be including more raw fruits and vegetables in your diet. So let Sonoma County's own certified raw food educator, Natalie Norman, teach you how. Visit natalienorman.com for delicious, easy recipes, meal plans, kitchen tools, and support. Get started living your happiest, healthiest life today. Ruth, to 
Just take a look at this. This will prove it to you. Ruth, there's no change. I've double checked.
you freaks. Mutation. Don't cry. There's nothing to cry about. We're all safe now. All safe. And so ends The Last Man on Earth, Paul Vincent Price. You know, he actually was the last man on Earth in this case, wasn't he? Indeed. Because they all had the disease. And you have to feel sorry for the dog, too. Well, I always felt sorry for dogs. I don't like it when they do bad things to animals in films. I can, I can see humans get their heads chopped off and arms lopped off. But uh, when they hurt a pet, not good. Not good at all. Anyways, what's in the future? For Mr. Madelaire. Uh I'm going to still be, be writing for Den of Geek. And that's this. Is, this is this. I wrote. So I thought an it was article. a website. It's an actual magazine. Well, actually, this is these magazines were created for um, New York and San Diego Comic Con. Hopefully, they're going to eventually do a print edition that this you'll is, find in the newsstands. This is but beautiful. But I would read this every day. But they're uh, working look, on. Um, it's got. It's got. What's his name? Bruce. Bruce Campbell. Yep. Bruce Campbell. He looks young. Ash versus, the, versus uh, Evil Dead is a great show. What a beautiful magazine. Well, Den of Geek, you must print this more often. So you wrote in here for X-Files. Yes, I wrote, uh, I did a bunch of uh, interviews that they compiled. A bunch? Yeah, that, that oh, page right there. This one? That page right this there. This is all you? That's all me. I did those five interviews. You had lunch with these two? Uh, no, I haven't had lunch with Jillian and David. I've well, spoken to them. shame on them. John and Jillian. No, what's his name? David and Jillian. David and Jillian. You have to have lunch with Matt. He might tell you something about the show that you don't know. Well, this is absolutely gorgeous, and this magazine's wonderful, and you're part of this. Yes. What a great deal. No, I, I should read more of these. And they cover all kinds of things, and they even have margarita ads, which you don't see too often in yeah. sci-fi horror for sci -fi, yep, magazines. Indeed. This is very well done. So normally Den of Geek is... A website. website. It's been right. around for a very long time, very big. And geeks who like dens, like Den of Geek. Yes. So uh, it's just Den of Geek? Den of Geek, yes. Den of Geek. Den of Geek. Easy. There's a US and UK version of it. Fantastic. Anything else you've got coming up? Uh, Maybe Christmas? Christmas? Um, well, uh, I'm working on a couple of films that I'm trying to get off the ground. and well, This um, is a big deal. Like, you're writing them, or...? Uh, yeah, I'm writing about like three half-hour films that will be debuting on the internet, and we're going to try to get the funding through Kickstarter. Well, you should de debut them here. I'll think about it. What kind of films are they? Uh, first one's a horror film. Uh, second one is like a... Yeah. You don't need the internet. This is television. People, <laughs> people, people put internet in the office, and they put television in the living room, and living room is the place to watch horror films, right? Right? Right. Maybe. I don't know. All right, Matt. Well, you know, you've been an amazing guest. I've never known so much about the uh, X-Files before. And I'm going to start watching again because I stopped at like season four. I just couldn't keep up. 
but uh, I'm going to start watching it now that yeah, I've been inspired Go ahead and binge watch. New, new season will be coming up next year, 10 episodes, season 11. Um, 10 episodes is not a season. It's well, a tease. It, it's, nowadays, a lot of shows are cut down to where they do 13 episodes with most television. I so. don't like that. You know, this is, uh, what, what is this, our 48th episode? 48 episodes in one year. It's our one-year anniversary. We've done 48 episodes, and here you've got these professionals. They can only do 10. Yeah, The Twilight Zone did like 37 episodes per season. See. So That's the original with Rod Serling. Rod Serling, yep. All right. All right. All right, got to go. Thank you again, Mr. Matt Allaire. Thank we you. want to have you again, perhaps to talk about one of your films or the next X-Files. But uh, till then, you folks, you have a nice rest of the weekend. Do something fun or just do something boring. Watch the show if you want to do something boring. It's, it's a great way to waste your time. That's it. We'll see you next time. So, Matt, I was thinking, since you're an expert at doing these chronologies, what if you were to do a chronology of all our Creature Feature episodes? Well, maybe after 10 seasons and a couple of alien abductions. <laughs>